Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Grain Feed, brought to you by EverAg. This is your weekly news feed for all things grain and all things feed. Each week we bring you updates on the markets with unique perspectives from an amazing team of analysts with the intention of helping grain and dairy farmers manage their risk. I'm your host, Jim Matthews, back in Chicago after a fun week in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where I attended the Central Plains Dairy Expo along with some fellow Ever Aggers. Great to see many of you out there. Saw some great presentations and panels, my favorite being Bubble or Bonanza. And yesterday's USDA report certainly gave us more to ponder on whether that bubble popped or if this is a buying opportunity within that Bonanza. Joining me to determine if yesterday's report was an April Fool's joke from the USDA, we have from Texas, our Director of Feed Procurement, Jake Kingsley. From way down in Atlanta, Illinois, we have our Director of Buyer Relations, Viral Prather. And from Platteville, the Paris of Southwest Wisconsin, our Director of Grain Foundations, Britt O'Connell. Team, happy Fool's Day, April Fool's Day. Good morning, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Good morning. Well, like a Freudian slip there saying happy Fool's Day to you guys. Um, as Paige timestamps the broadcast, it is Friday morning and markets have mostly been chopping lower after yesterday's report, at least this morning they have been. Uh, Britt, I won a few bets on the corn numbers yesterday. I'll be collecting from some of my favorite dairymen at next year's Central Plains Expo. I put money on 90 million acres of corn and thankfully did not bet on my 88 million acres of beans. Government's corn acreage number was, in fact, 89.5 million, down 4% from last year, while projected soybean acreage was a whopping 91 million, which would be a record high at 4% from last year. So, Britt, what's your take on the report and the market's reaction since its release? So, certainly there was a surprise in the uh, acreage report. We had a dramatic reaction from both corn and soybean markets with corn up uh, as much as limit at one moment and beans down uh, 40 on the day. And really what this does is this puts pressure on the corn market in particular. As we move into the heart of growing the growing season, we need every bushel and every acre of corn in the U.S. really to keep this global balance sheet healthy, paired with a really good safrina corn crop. Now, they are off to a good start down there. They are, are satisfied with the temperature and moisture that they've been getting, but that can all change. As we move into May, when they're largely going to be pollinating, it's going to be critical to see how that weather really pans out. Certainly here in the U.S., all eyes are going to be turning to weather as well now that we've turned the calendar to April. There's a lot of areas in the Midwest that are cool and damp right now. So we'll see if that does start to feed into this market at all. But certainly the pressure is on the corn market right now. And moving forward, we've seen that corn bean ratio tighten to some of the the tightest levels that we've seen really in recent history. I think the tightest that we saw it at here has been 2.1. But we have seen it as tight as 1.7 historically. And so we'll continue to monitor that spread. But don't rule out the possibility of $7 corn potentially luring a few acres away from beans as we move into the growing season. Stay tuned as we await the June planted acreage report. Yeah, that's exactly right. We have, we've got some time on our hands. I know there's a lot of skepticism on some of the figures yesterday. But yeah, like you said, Britt, this is what we have to work with now until those official numbers. Uh, Burl, any notes on the grain stocks figures? They kind of take a back seat uh, to the much anticipated acreage numbers. But you've been watching exports, uh, ethanol, crush demand all take their toll on potential end stock figures in the U.S. So what's your take? Yeah, so the as you kind of mentioned, the grain stocks report uh, certainly contain less surprises uh, than the acreage report uh, yesterday, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the information on the report was insignificant, right? So um, as far as total bushels go on stock, uh, corn ended up pretty darn close to what analysts were expecting it to be ahead of the report. But soybeans actually hugged the top end of the range. And so that has certainly helped to weigh on soybean prices, especially old crop, right? So one of the uh, the facts is that the soybean stocks are up 23.6% year over year 
as of March 1st. Uh, that The biggest increases uh, by state come from Iowa, which has 48% more soybeans on hand, and then also Illinois, which has 41% more soybeans on hand. Uh, knowing uh, both of those data points specifically, you know, it's all of a sudden not too hard to see why basis values overall haven't been extremely attractive over the last few months. Yeah, that's an excellent point, bro. And that is why we keep an eye on those things. We'll have to keep an eye on the I states as we move forward here with those guys uh, holding on to some more beans than anticipated, I suppose. Jake, you are the king of feed procurement. How are you feeling about our dairymen and their feed risk after yesterday's reports? Uh, you know, I I feel somewhat positive about the year going forward here. I think a lot of folks were prepared on the corn side of their usages, particularly new crop turned out to be pretty important here with the trimming of acres. Protecting that upside there turned out to be a big deal. And I think you still have some work to do going forward because if acres do indeed pan out the way that they're projected right now, we'll see new crop continue to work closer to old crop prices. But where we're going to see some positives is potentially in soybean meal. As we, as we talked, we've got a larger carry out on soybeans here in the country. So we'll be able to export a little bit more of that without having so much pressure. And then if we get the crop that we're talking about, and our crush plants, the new crush plants come online. That's just going to add to the break here for our protein buyers. And then Canadian canola projections didn't change much from February to March in their reports, but they are projecting some record or near record production up there. So that's going to help us again on the protein side. The one thing we are seeing here in old crop is our rail rates have kind of worked back towards pre-Russia Ukraine level. So that should help out a little bit as far as logistics and transportation go. Maybe we'll see basis settle back down to some more uh, normal levels there, but we're seeing new crop rail hold on to the strength that it had built over the last few weeks. And I think that's A, uncertainty in what the freight market's going to do over time and B, come harvest time here in the U.S., we're going to be leaned on heavily for exports as South America's kind of had a little bit of a lackluster year and and everything in Ukraine is still a huge question mark. So, Okay, Jake, thank you for that. And thank you, team. Well done, as always. Looking forward to regrouping next week. In the meantime, thanks to Phil and the Blimling crew for their charts. Thank you to Paige for her production magic. And thank you to the viewers for watching the Grain Feed. Contact information is on the screen. Please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. That's all for today. See you next time on The Grain Feed.